Okay. So I was designated to talk about um, two, two basic technologies which I am engaged in, which are fundamentally addressing the same thing, namely watching and observing people. So <clears throat> we are interested in observing, monitoring, analyzing, and communicating in geographically distributed fashion physical activities of people, young and old. We have three sensing technologies that offer a spectrum of observations. We have modes, which are wireless technologies with three axis accelerometers and two axis of gyros. And we are, we are just like <coughs> Professor Kenny mentioned, exploring other sensors. But r right now, what I have results is with these three axis and two axis gyros. We have a face-based motion capture system that can measure up to 128 LED sensors on the body and record with temporal resolution 480 hertz. So you really can capture the real-time uh, real motion. And then we have built a 48 video camera system that can reconstruct three-dimensional information, 360 degrees view from people with roughly 150 by 150 by 150 spatial resolution and approximately with 15 frames per second temporal resolution. Um, as far as the, the wireless technology, we also in collaboration with Cornell University and um, Vanderbilt University, we have built a complete network of these body sens sensors on the body in conjunction with wireless communication technology that you need if a person is moving around in their homes or, or wherever they are in order to pick the, the signal and then connect it to uh, either a telephone, wireless telephone, or through an internet. We have tested this in um, wonder build on a 90 year old gentleman and so we we are looking in in terms of collaboration we are looking to deploy this and test it in real time real situations and uh, hospitals is one uh, here is an example of the wireless technology one of the unsolved or or problems we still are facing is really the energy consumption. The reason why it's so bulky is because we are using two AA batteries and we really need uh, help in this regard to miniaturize and, and reduce the amount of, of um, the, the size of the, uh, of the energy source. Now, there are several technologies out there how you can reduce the energy consumption but in our case, we haven't gone this way because we are still, we feel in the debugging process stage where we are trying to understand, you know, what the, what the signal looks like and how to, how to analyze it. Uh, this is the, the slide of the teleimmersive environment. You can see the the 48 cameras hopefully around. There are 12 clusters. Each cluster is composed of four cameras, three black and white that do the reconstruction of three-dimensional information, and one is a, um, a color camera. We collaborate with UC Davis, um, where we are um, installing a smaller version of this teleimmersive laboratory and, and hoping with their skills of real-time graphical, I interactive graphics that we can uh, hopefully in next two months or so have two radiologists, one in Berkeley, one in Davis, interact in real time with uh, radiological data and manipulate. And this would be, uh, we are hoping that this would really help um, in di collaborative diagnosis and surgical planning and even perhaps uh, remote, um, remote advice for a surgeon who perhaps is not specialist for a, for a 
given organ, but can be advised uh, remotely from a specialist. We had a, a presentation from a military surgeon who made a very eloquent argument f a need for this kind of um, technology in Afghanistan, for example, where he had to face doing surgery on brain, where he's not a brain surgeon, but he was able to connect to a specialist and he advised him how to perform the surgery. So this, these are all my slides and now if you could kindly show first the, the I have two videos. One, it, it uh, shows, uh, I don't know which one. One, it shows the, <coughs> the collaboration that we did with the UC Davis where they have a uh, uh, Keck cave and um, <coughs> the person who is uh, in, the, in the light is uh, in Berkeley, Gregory Kurilo. You can, uh, you can see him and he's interacting with the person in Davis who is in the darker colors and there is this three-dimensional object that you can manipulate and discuss and plan and, and do whatever needs to be done. So from collaboration point of view, we are interested in really engaging real uh, scientists who will tell us what are the questions, what are their needs, what would they like to have, and finally evaluate how useful this is in terms of uh, their, their activity. Um, we so this was done in last November, if I or December, yeah, or and um, we are now this. As you notice, the the people have the on this Berkeley side. We are not assuming any special devices. These are all device cameras that are in the environment. And in fact, right now I have a three-dimensional video camera which can track your hand and the hand is serving as a scalpel. So it's completely um, independent or, or, or free of any special gadgetry and that's the goal so that people who wish to interact, they will not be hampered with any special gear that otherwise perhaps in other technologies they would have to use. Uh, okay, I think you get the gist of what we can do and, and hoping to do even more. Can I see this second video, please? <coughs> the second video shows you a five sensors, one wireless sensors on the person Gregory, no, Philip Krilos, who is, was, a, was part of our collaboration with Cornell and spent um, almost two semesters at Berkeley. And he has five sensors, one on each hand, one on each leg, and one on the waist. And, um, uh, and uh, you will see the, the, the visualization of what, what, uh, how the, the system can interpret the data. Um, for privacy reasons, we have modeled the, the motion, the physical activity as an avatar, simply so that we can disguise the actual person but of course uh, we can do both. Um, what's happening? You, 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 oh, I'm sorry. Okay, well I have in, uh, do you have on my, on my, do you have my, my directory? On the elder tech, there is a video Okay, well, anyway, um, I'm sorry you couldn't see it, but, uh, but um, we have that, so we thank you. Thank you. I, 
actually have it on my on my computer, so anybody who's interested, I can show it to you. Questions for Dr. <coughs> I fail to mention that actually we have made considerable pr progress with pattern recognition. When you, when you have these uh, wireless sensors, one of the, the questions has been mentioned here many times, namely when you have, you, you measure all these accelerometers uh, and over time you, you can collect tremendous amount of data and the task is not to transmit all the data, perhaps for privacy reasons and security reasons, but also perhaps it's not needed only when, when there is a real alarm. So we have uh, Dr. Alan Young, who is here, has developed a very novel way of data reduction via, via classification and recognition, and the success rate, we, we tested it on 20 different physical activities and the success rate is 96%, so which is very good in terms of pattern recognition classification. And we have uh, capabilities to do some distributed processing on the, on the sensors, but then also when you collect the data so uh, to a central, central processor, um, the, 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 then the, the collected data, the recognition is better, of course, than, as opposed to when you do it separately. If, if there are no questions, uh, I'd like to invite our uh, uh, speakers back up for uh, a panel. Uh, we have uh, about uh, 12 minutes of Q&A, uh, so we can do that. Thank you, George.